Hi, everybody. Good Saturday afternoon to you, and welcome to Far Away Fulcher, Texas, for tournament baseball on VipeFortBend.com. The Ridgepoint Panthers taking on the Katie Pato Panthers, a team that next year there's a good chance they might see them in playoff baseball. But for now, Pato is a Class 5A school and will remain so through the, uh, well, you know, Memorial Day weekend when when school is out. And, boy, that'll be a wonderful time. Uh, I say that as a school teacher. Anyway, I'm Roger Smith. Glad to have you with us. And we don't know too much about these teams because we've been busy, busy, busy with basketball for the last three months. And only last night were the Clements Rangers boys eliminated from the playoffs. And, therefore, now we turn our attention to baseball and softball. Ridgepoint, always a contender for the District 26A championship, if not a perennial winner of District 26A. And last year, they went into the playoffs as the number one seed, but they lost a one-game playoff to Cinco Ranch, a game where they know they left a lot of runs out there and could have easily won the game. They let it get away from them. And I think the seniors, especially on this Panthers team, the Ridgepoint Panthers, I got to say Ridgepoint and Peyto since, you know, they're both Panthers. Anyway... Ridgepoint is driven to get into the playoffs again and to go much, much deeper. We're going to step aside, take a break, and we'll do the best we can with lineups because in this tournament environment, you just don't always get the regular early information. You don't have stats. You don't have some of the things that you usually will have to make it much more uh, enjoyable for the listener. So we'll step aside and be back with the beginning of the game between Peyto and Ridgepoint. Glad you're with us on VibeFortBend.com. My Friday nights, usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlist bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get gig speed internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. Back again at Fulcher, and we're going to give you the starting lineup for the Peyto Panthers, and I believe they are going to be the home team. Ridgepoint will bat first. And what I might have to do with Ridgepoint is just kind of tell you who comes up player by player because we were not able to get a lineup for them. But here is the lineup for the Peyto Panthers. Leading off and playing shortstop is Gabriel Velasquez. Batting second, it is Jacob Scott. He's playing in left field. Batting third, Daniel Oviedo. He plays third base. And the cleanup hitter is Josh Prieto, a tight end on the state championship Peyto football team. 
He's the DH batting cleanup, and he's batting in place of Gabriel Flores, who plays second base for the Peto Panthers. Kalen Tillman is going to be batting in the fifth spot and playing right field. And by the way, let me double-check the roster. I want to make sure I got his first name right. Yeah, it is Kayan, K-A-Y-I-N, Kayan Tillman. No L in there. And then Ashton Sweet bats sixth. He's the catcher. Brandon Campos is in center field, and he bats seventh. Garrett Smith is the pitcher. And Tyler Silvis, also one of the stars of the Peyto football team in 2021, is playing first base, and he bats in the ninth spot. So we'll tell you who comes up when they come up. And by the way, uh, we're going to step aside one more time, and hopefully we'll find a way to give you better information about what's going on in this ball game. The umpires have talked with the head coaches, and we'll get started within a minute or two here on VitefortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. We're back. Peyto is on the field. Garrett Smith, the right-hander, taking his warm-up tosses. Peyto wearing the Columbia blue jersey tops. And the gray road pants, even though they are the home team. The catcher for Peyto, Ashton Sweet. At first base, Tyler Silvis. Second baseman, Gabriel Flores. Gabriel Velasquez is playing at shortstop. At third base, it's Daniel Oviedo. In left field, Jacob Scott. In center, Brandon Campos. Let's go, Brandon. And in right field, Kayan Tillman. And leading off for your Ridgepoint Panthers, it'll be Zion Stevens. He'll be followed by Owen Ferris. And we'll just tell you who's coming up for Ridgepoint, uh, you know, when they come up. That's the way it goes sometimes during tournament baseball. District play will begin, I believe, in earnest the week of spring break. So that's going to be fun. We'll have lots of pre-district baseball next week. All right, here we go. First pitch coming to Zion Stevens. On the way, first pitch swinging, and it's a ground ball off the third baseman. Stevens motoring down the line, and he's safe. No throw made over there by Daniel Oviedo. So Ridgepoint gets the first man on, and I guess I should tell you, first of all, the dimensions of the ballpark. It's fairly short down the right and left field lines. It's symmetrical, 315 feet. To the power alleys, it's 360 feet. To straightaway center, it is 390, and the fence is a little bit higher, and I'd say there's about a 40-foot section where it looks like it goes up, uh, I'm going to estimate, 18 feet. Owen Ferris stands in, and we'll see if Stevens wants to take off. Here's the first pitch to Ferris, down and in for a ball. By the way, I have this extra microphone. I think I want to add it to the mix, but I'll do it during a commercial break because sometimes when I do, it it makes an extra loud noise, and it's, it's not real pleasant. So the best time for me to do that is during a commercial break. There is a very strong, and I mean very strong, wind blowing out to left center. So right-handed hitters who pull it 
have a very good chance to get it over the wall. Ridgepoint and Katie Pato taking each other on. And to be honest, I was so busy getting ready for playoff basketball during this past week that I didn't get a chance to see if these two teams have ever played each other. I'm not sure that they have. But when Pato moves up to Class 6A next year, they might meet in the playoffs, and that would be fun. There's a throw over from Garrett Smith. Easily back in is Stevens. Ferris has a very brief ritual where he kind of steps back out of the box then in with the right foot, now the left, and he swings and ropes it down the line, but it's going to twist foul. Goes on top of the netting that covers the hitting facility here at Fulshire. By the way, I don't know if he even mentioned that. Maybe I did at the very beginning. We're at the neutral site of Fulshire for this tournament game. Fulshire during the last realignment by the UIL, moved up from Class 4A to Class 5A, and they are in a tough, tough district both for football and for all the other sports. There's another throw over, and Stevens is back in standing. There has been a hard wind blowing all day, and we did a 10 o'clock game this morning as the Austin Bulldogs had a walkover win 11 to 1 over Morton Ranch and Eros de Siga their catcher got the ball up into the jet stream and homered to left center and that ball goes behind Ferris and all the way to the backstop and Stevens trots on over to second base it looked for a moment like Ferris was going to check with the umpire as to whether you know uh, the ball hit him as Forrest Gump would say in the butt talks. But if it hit him at all, it grazed him, and you know, this is tournament ball, so we're not gonna sweat it. All right, so the count on Ferris is one and one, if the scoreboard is correct. He stands tall in the right-handed batter's box. Smith brings it. And that's down low for a ball. Stevens takes a big old lead off of second base and now scampers back. I'd say he was a good 30 feet off the bag after Smith released the pitch. Two and one the count. Owen Ferris got a lot of starts last year. Here's the two one. On the outside corner for a strike, and it's that generous strike zone that you often see in high school, but especially during tournament play. Nothing really on the line, so, you know, let's, let's not stay out here for three hours. We all kind of agree on that. Ferris ready. Smith looks back at second and brings it. And he fouls it out of play to the right, and it's going to land just behind the softball press box here at Fulcher. We have several games that we're gonna bring you next week and one of them is Aldi Nimitz taking on the Elkins Knights at the Castle in Missouri City. That'll be Monday at 6 p.m. first pitch. And we'll try to broadcast as many games of all the Fort Bend schools as we can. Ferris ready, here's the 2-2. Rips it foul on the ground wide of third and wide of coach Clinton Welch over in the first base box is coach Welch's number one right hand man Michael Dutka the pitcher whisperer have a good friend Quentin McCollum used to have kids going to Kempner now his his youngest boy Micah McCollum goes to Fulcher he had a little something to say about the landscape, the skyline beyond the outfield fence. Pitch to Ferris, and he sends a little bleeder over first base, and it drops in. He swung big. He meant to hit it deep, but it just kind of looped over the first baseman and dropped in, that first baseman being Tyler Silvis. So Ridgepoint has something going here. Nobody out. And Justin Vosses comes to the plate. Justin now a fourth-year varsity starter. 
And I will double check, but I presume that he is the only Ridgepoint Panther to have played in the state championship game in 2019. That was a great year. It didn't end very well on the last day. But Ridgepoint broke through and went to places they had never been before. Runners at the corners for Vasas. Smith brings the pitch. Justin looks at one up and in, backs up slightly. Back when he was a freshman, he had committed to go to Texas A&M, and he has not wavered from that commitment. He's going to be an Aggie. Right foot on the back part of the batter's box. Slightly open stance. Low, slow practice swings. Smith out of the stretch, brings it, and it's a hard ground ball, but it's a couple of feet wide of third base. You know what? I think I might be able to hook up this microphone without uh, making a terrible sound in your ear. Let's see if I can do that. And it's a perfect opportunity as the Peyto catcher is going out to the mound to talk to Garrett Smith. Here we go. Now, if this sounds bad for a moment, it, don't worry, it won't last. All right, I think it's going to work. Okay, how, we go? how about that? Let me turn that up. Okay, so when the crowd cheers, you're going to hear more of it now. Justin Vasa steps back in with a count of one and one. We're over on the Ridge Point side, so if the, the Purple Panthers do something good, you'll hear about it. Here's the pitch. Vasos takes down and away. Good eye, and it's two and one. Waiting to bat next is J.J. Kennett. This is the type of game, although it's not of huge importance, we really like to be able to bring you a game where a lot of folks are just not going to be able to attend. It's a Saturday afternoon game in Fulcher. Glad you're listening. Vasas takes up and in, and the count is 3-1. and one. So about that outfield skyline, if Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future was around, he'd say it used to be farmland as far as the eye could see. And now it is covered with suburban rooftops. That's why Fulcher is getting so big. That's the Cross Creek subdivision. Swing by Vasas and it's rope to right center field. It will get down. Coming on home is Stevens. Ridgepoint leads it one to nothing. And coming around third is Ferris. He will score easily. And Vasas is going to try for an inside the park homer. And he's got it! Three to nothing, Rich Point Panthers. He smoked it to right center field. And when I saw Brandon Campos going back there to get the ball, it looked like he had caught it cleanly. And I guess it had more hot sauce on it than he expected. So a special celebration of Vasas when he gets back to the dugout. So I don't know about... Uh, you know, who's responsible, who's the official scorer. But it seems to me like that is a bona fide inside the park home run. Base is clear, still nobody out. And it is J.J. Kennett takes the first pitch right over his toenails for ball one. We have bright sunlight and a lot of wind. Let's see if we can get the full sure temperature here. Smith having a rough first inning. Still nobody out. Kennett checks his swing, and they appeal to the first base umpire. Palms down. J.J. did not swing. It's 79 degrees in Katy. I don't, you know, my phone's not telling me what the exact temperature is in Fulcher, but I assume that it's pretty much the same as what we have in Katy. 79 degrees, a hard wind blowing out to left center field. The last pitch to Kennett was a strike. Smith at the belt, brings the pitch. And that smoke towards second base and a hot smash off of the glove. It took one very quick short hop and ricocheted into right field. And it's really hard to give a second baseman an error on a play like that. That was Gabriel Flores. And you know what he should have done? I know it's easy for me to say. But uh, you don't want to let the ball hit the ground if you don't have to. So Kennett comes off the field. 
And I presume that means that uh, he's either catching or pitching today. And I didn't get the ID on the runner over there, but I will soon. And now stepping into hit is Travis Vlasic. Or based on what his teammates are saying from the dugout, I'm going to say Vlasic. Here's the pitch. Takes a curve ball down and away. The pitch rudder is Tyler Martin. We've got big puffy clouds in the sky, but no threat of rain. Vlasic ready, started to go, left it alone, and it's down for a ball. Two and nothing. When I get a chance, I'm going to give you a little rundown of all the games that we plan to bring you next week. But I do know that the first of them is that game on Monday at Elkins with Aldine Nimitz. Foul tip, trickles over by the on-deck circle on the right side. Peyto's dugout is on the first base side, and Ridgepoint is over on the third base side. There's ample foul territory here, but only as far as the infield goes. Once you get about, you know, 40 feet past first base and third base, then you have a much narrower section. Throw over to try and get Tyler Martin, and he dives back in. Well, so far I have been not, not been able to locate a game changer page where, oh, now, now there it is, there it is, okay. I'll open it as soon as I get a chance. Smith ready and delivers. Inside with the curve ball, he didn't get the break on it that he hoped. Okay, now we're talking. And I want to thank Colette Mihalis, who is making the Game Changer page work today. Three and one the count. Here it comes. Big rip and a little foul ball that just bounced up and hit Vlasic in the leg. Ridgepoint with four hits already. So I'm not going to argue with Ms. Mihalis. That last uh, hit was a hit, not an error by the second baseman, Flores. Will Martin steal? We shall see. There he goes. And it's a beautiful hit and run right behind him into right field for a base hit, and it gets past the right fielder. Tyler Martin will be able to score easily. And coming all the way to third is Travis Vlasic. He's being waved home by Coach Welch, and he's going to come all the way home, and the throw gets away from the catcher. Rich Point scores two. So that's a base hit and a big error in right field. Five hits for Ridgepoint. Correction. Yeah, that is right. Five hits for Ridgepoint. And now an error on Peto, Peto on their right fielder, Kayan Tillman. And now we're going to have a visit to the mound by Chris Correjo, the head coach of the Peyto Panthers. We'll step aside and be back on VipeFortBend.com. It is 5-0 Panthers, still batting, still nobody out in the first. My Friday nights usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlists bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get GigSpeed Internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. All right, we are back. Mitchell Paget, my producer, the ace of the staff in World Headquarters, said to turn up my mic, and I just did, and hopefully that sounds a little bit better. And I might even turn up the crowd mic as well. 
want you to know there are people here. 1-0 the count to Carter Groen. Second pitch to him. Started to swing, held up, but he took a strike, 1-1. One one. So Carter Groen, a tight end on the football team. And Parker Menifee used to be a big old tight end on the football team who also played baseball. I think he wore number 17. I don't remember if it was baseball or football as Groen takes a ball downstairs. The bases are empty. Nobody out in the top of the first as the Purple Panthers are whooping up on the Blue Peto Panthers at this point. Groen ready. Powerful right-handed hitter. Takes one inside. Just missed his kneecaps. And it's three and one. That's the kind of count where you think he might just cut loose if it's anything that looks delicious. In other words, if Garrett Smith gives him a cookie, he needs to send it over the wall. He did swing, but it was a pitch that kind of took a sharp break downward before it got to the strike zone. So it's three and two. Last year's Ridge Point season was going great during district play until they had an interruption because of the you-know-what virus. And they were never the same when they returned. Swing and a ground ball foul, and Coach Welch has to lift his left foot to make sure he doesn't get a big bruise. Ball rolls out into left field, and there goes the shortstop Gabriel Velasquez to get it. By the way, they've got Alvin Velasquez wears number two and Gabriel wears number five, but they are not brothers. They are not related. You can hear that hard wind blowing. Growing ready. 3-2 pitch. And he swings and fouls it off the backstop just two feet from the top of this very large net. So Ridge Point in 2019 became the first team since Dulles from Fort Bend ISD to make it to the state final. The Vikings lost to the Woodlands in, I believe, 2013. And that pitch hit growing a little bit, grazed his rib cage. I don't think it hurt too bad. But you know, he's a ball player. So he's on and we still don't have any outs. Now Theron Mihalis, whose mom is, uh, I believe, running the Game Changer page that I'm looking at. Indeed she is. Left-handed hitter. Pitch on the way, takes a strike on the outside corner, nicely placed by Garrett Smith. And Theron is the fourth Mihalis child to Go to Ridge Point, and I think all of them were athletes in one way or another. One of his sisters now teaching at Dulles. Swing and a miss on the next pitch, and he's down 0-2. By the way, I don't know if his sister's name is pronounced Kalia or Kalia, but I do know that on her teacher website page at Dulles, she mentions that she went to Ridge Point. I don't know if she wants to leave that up there. <laughs> I don't know if she's gotten any blowback off of that, shall we say. The 0-2 pitch to Theron, swings and fights it off, straight back into the net. Waiting to bat next is Forrest Jackson. And when he gets on base, you know that I'm going to use my first opportunity to use a three-word phrase, well known in pop culture, where the middle word is Forrest. And serving it down the left field line, fair by a foot. That is in there. Here comes Groen to third base, and Coach Welch gives him the stop sign there. And cruising into second with a double is Theron Mihalis. And the hits just keep on coming. You remember when Tom Cruise said that from the back of a cab in that movie, A Few Good Men? All right, Forrest Jackson coming up, and the Panthers are going to bat around as, well, I think they are. Swing and a foul straight back off the catcher, then off the umpire. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. 
Let me see if I can ID, ID the uh, on-deck hitter. Okay, that's Josh Wilmot. All right, so the number eight hitter is Carter Groen and Wilmot waiting to bat next. 0-1 the count. Here's the pitch. And he got it up in the air, but it's going to twist foul down the left field line. But that wind really grabbed it, and I'm not really sure where it came down. They have a hitting cage surrounded by all that netting. And it was headed that way, but I just don't know where it ended up. So the count is 0-2. On Forrest Jackson. Swings and a little nubber foul over to the on-deck circle and a very poor attempt at making a bare hand play by Josh Wilmot over there. I kid because I care. Forrest bounces the bat off of his right shoulder, kind of like Lance Berkman used to do. Swing, a little looper into the foul ground, and it drops between the catcher and the first baseman. Not that they weren't making a great effort. They were coming on as hard as they could. Ashton Sweet running up there along with Tyler Silvis, and it dropped in. So you've got Carter growing at third. Theron Mihalis at second. He just doubled. And Forrest Jackson in the batter's box. Still nobody out. Five runs in for the Ridge Point Panthers. There's a swing and a bouncer. Two short stop and a long throw to make. And they get one out at first base. But on the play, Carter Groen scores. And it's 6-0 Ridge Point. So even though he didn't hit safely, Forrest Jackson did his job. Nice backhand play, by the way, by Gabriel Velasquez. Josh Wilmot. By the way, he's got uh, very handsome purple spikes. I think they're Adidas. First pitch to him. First pitch swinging, and it's fouled over on the right side. It'll, it won't get beyond the net, but it does brush the net on its way down. So the first baseman, Silvis, was coming over, but if he had made that catch... It would not have counted. Zion Stevens started it off, and he's waiting to bat next. So Ridge Point will have batted around in the first inning. And a little tapper, it bounced up, and it hit Wilmot, so it's just a foul ball. The count goes to 0-2. If you're listening back at home on the hard scrabble streets of Siena, we hope you're having a nice day. It's downright balmy out here, just a little windy, but that might give us a home run at some point. That is a long drive towards center field, ranging back, 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 and it is a beautiful catch out there. I had to look closely. Brandon Campos made the catch, and he had to dive in order to do it. Another run comes in. It's a sacrifice fly. Two outs now as Josh Wilmot drives home a run. And he's not even sure what happened. He was standing on second, and Coach Welch says, yeah, he caught it out there. So he says, get to the dugout. But a great job there. That long fly ball kind of reminded me of the one that Jax Biggers hit back in 2015 for Ridge Point when the Panthers were down to their final out against Crosby. And you know what? The umpires have talked about it and changed the call. And now the center fielder, Campos, is coming in with his palms toward the heavens. He says, I caught the ball. Why are you sending him back to second base? And Chris Carrejo, the head coach of Peyto, is stepping over the first baseline. He's wondering what's happening out there. So he's talking to the infield umpire, who was certainly in the better position to make the call. And if this was a district game, we'd have us a real brouhaha here. Chris Carrejo shaking his head. We'll go back to the dugout. You know, you pick your battles and a March 5th tournament game before district play starts is 
Not something to, you know, blow your gasket over. So, still only one out. It's not a sacrifice fly. It's actually a double for Josh Wilmot. And back to the top of the order, Zion Stevens. Right-handed batter. Stance neither open nor closed. Wilmot leads off second, and the pitch is down and away for a ball. So I'll have to watch the lineup go through again and be sure of what I'm saying, but I believe that Wilmot is the only one with purple shoes. Smith looks back at Wilmot. Now Stevens holds up his hand and he wants extra time. He got tired of standing there waiting. Ridge Point brought a pretty good crowd. I think they have more people here than the Peto folks who didn't have nearly as far to travel. Here's the 1-0 downstairs to Stevens and a nice block on the part of the catcher Ashton Sweet. Owen Ferris waiting to bat next. This is a very, very long top of the first inning. Stevens looks at a pitch away, 3-0. Roger Smith and my silent partner, Mitchell Paget, back at Vipe World Headquarters, bringing you this game, our second baseball game of at least 30 during the regular season. And the pitch comes through and it goes through Sweet's mitt. Wilmot moves from second to third. And that was ball four. Stevens is now at first. And with runners at the corners, you can bet that Stevens is going to take off. Maybe not on the first pitch, but pretty soon. Still only one out. It was an RBI ground out. And now Peto is going to get some bullpen action going. That's Paul Gerke who's going to go down there. And no, actually, Paul Gerke is a catcher. So he's going to do the catching down of the bullpen. Braden Marone is going to warm up his arm. And Owen Ferris with runners at the corners ready to hit. Here it comes. There goes Stevens, just like I thought. Throw down. Doesn't even go all the way to second base. It is cut off there. Gabriel Flores, also known as Gabriel Flores Marquez. By the way, I had a hard time locating his number. He is um, he is playing second base, but he's not hitting. He's the he's being DH'd for. That is a verb. I think. I'm sure there's a teacher at Ridge Point, the home of scholars and champions, who can. Tell me if that's permissible. Okay, runners at second and third. No force situation. Ferris ready for the pitch. Off speed, and it's down and out. One and one. So I spent, I don't know, three months, you know, in gyms calling games where your stuff never blows away. But I've had a lot of stuff blow away today. There's a looper towards second, and the second baseman grabs it, that being Gabriel Flores Marquez. Two outs, and the runners stay right where they are. And by the way, uh, there's not going to be a brawl or anything, but the Peito catcher, Ashton Sweet, tossed a bat toward Justin Vasos that uh, had Justice uh, Justin not stepped out of the way. It would have left a mark. But they smiled at each other, so... Uh, I don't think the benches are going to clear. All right, two outs, runners second and third. 7 nothing Ridge Point, first pitch to Vasos, and it's off of his bat and off of the catcher's helmet, and then almost goes over the backstop. Almost. At Fulcher, you've got the darkened ring of all-weather material around the home plate circle. Not all the way around, of course. Purple letters that say Fulcher, trimmed in white. Vasas looks at a pitch outside. It's one and one. 
He nods his head, and I don't know if he's nodding his head as if to say that's a good pitch. It was called a ball. It did look pretty good from here, but we're not directly behind home plate. Boss is ready. And that pitch is inside. It goes all the way to the backstop. Sweet comes back to retrieve it, but not before Wilmot comes home. It's eight to nothing Ridge Point, and they are still batting in the top of the first. I guess that's the latest dugout celebration. So Vasas had a three run inside the park homer his first time up. The wind is blowing in such a way that he could very easily get an over the fence homer. Swings for all he's worth and fouls it back into the net. So Ridge Point has seven district opponents and they'll play 14 district games and we'll broadcast a lot of them. Pitch on the way and fouled out of play over the net and I didn't hear it hit anything. It could have though. This is one of those places where the cars are close enough you could very easily get damaged in which case you'd need to call the Needville Insurance Agency. They can save you money on your home and your car insurance. They've done it for me. I recommend them. Vasas looks at a pitch down and away and the count now goes to three and two. Zion Stevens, who started this whole debacle of a half inning, is at third base. He has made two plate appearances and here's Vasas trying to make the most of his second plate appearance. The three, two pitch. He hits it high to center field, but this is gonna be playable. Campos moves in, let's go Brandon. Finally, Peto gets out of the inning and the score is eight to nothing. The Ridge Point Purple Panthers against the Peto Blue Panthers who are coming to bat. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTyronAuto.com. This exclusive VipeFortBend.com broadcast of Ridge Point Panthers baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires and the best service that your vehicle needs. In fact, anything that your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday and Peto fans, they also have a location in Katy Cinco Ranch. Visit firsttireandauto.com. By Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. And you're gonna feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And by the aforementioned Needville Insurance Agency. Put hundreds of dollars back in your pocket when Bradley Stavenaugh and the Needville Insurance Agency team go to work for you. They will shop all those insurance characters, they'll uh, carriers, not characters, and find the very lowest premium for you. You don't even have to leave your house. Call Bradley Stavenaugh and he'll save you money on your car or your home or both. 979-793-7411 is the number or needvilleinsurance.com. J.J. Kennett on the mound for the Ridge Point Panthers, right-hander. And let's see if, uh, thanks to Ms. Mihalis, I can tell you who is out there in the field. Owen Ferris is catching. Vlasic at first base, Zion Stevens at second. Justin Voss is playing shortstop. And let's see, I want to get an ID on the the third baseman, it says L. Ham. And I'm looking at my uh, game changer 
roster, and I don't see L. Ham. I'll have to ask somebody about that. He wears number 19. Kennett brings the first pitch, and it comes in, hits the dirt. Gabriel Velasquez leading off for the Panthers. In the outfield, Carter Groen in left, Theron Mihalis in center, and Forrest Jackson in right. Second pitch is also a ball. Two and nothing. And burning off the outside corner. Nice pitch by JJ. And it's two and one. Velasquez ready. Pitch is way outside, and I think maybe JJ overthrew that one a little bit. And missed outside. Three and one. Pitch on the way, and a hot smash inside third, past Ham, and it'll roll toward the left field corner, and Velasquez is motoring toward second, and pulls up there with a double. No worries, Ridge Point is up eight to nothing as Peto comes to bat here in the bottom of the first. Next up, Jacob Scott, the left fielder. So a double for Velasquez and J.J. Kennett will try to get this next guy. And the first pitch is low to Jacob Scott. It's just a beautiful shade of blue that Peto uses for its jerseys. And now that is ripped into left field. Up with it is growing. And he's going to come home with it and a stop sign at third base. And Ham makes the cutoff play, throws it back to Vasa, supplies the tag, however... Velasquez does get back into third base safely. And Jacob Scott, he didn't take second on the throw. I guess when you're down eight, you just don't want to take that risk. And here we go. It's Daniel Oviedo. As I recall, one of the football players, maybe in the secondary for Peto, takes the first pitch, breaking ball in there for a strike. Besides the... Very nice shade of blue that Peto wears on their jerseys. They have the silver batting helmets. Oviedo takes one up and in. There goes the runner and they throw him out. Beautiful throw by Owen Ferris. An absolute laser to throw out Jacob Scott. So score that a CS for Caught Steely. So one out. You still have Gabriel Velasquez at third. 0-2 the count and swing and a miss. Well, if the scoreboard is right, it's 0-2, but I guess maybe that pitch on the stolen base attempt was a ball. So it's now 1-2. and two. All right. Kennett delivers a change up and just missed the outside corner. You could kind of see him exhale out there. He can't believe he didn't get the call, but... Just as it was with Coach Correjo on the Peto side who thought his center fielder caught that long fly ball earlier. There's a called strike three. And Kennett does get the strikeout. So, you know, Correjo didn't want to really push that point too hard. And J.J. Kennett not going to do anything demonstrative to show up the guy affectionately called Blue. Here's Josh Prieto. Takes a curveball, strike that burns off the inside corner. Prieto, you know, he didn't catch that many passes as a tight end during the football season, but what he caught, I think more than 50% of them were against Hightower. He crushed the Hurricanes. Swings and misses at a changeup, and he's down 0-2. Yeah, Josh Prieto was a guy they went to a lot when they played Hightower, and they beat him twice. The first time, 55-7. to seven. Ouch. And there's a call strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. J.J. Kennett blowing three pitches past Josh Prieto. And we are done with the first inning. Ridge Point on top by a score of 8 to nothing. This is VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County and Ridge Point Sports. 
Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Right-hander Braden Marone has come on to pitch for Peto. One very forgettable inning for their starter, Garrett Smith. By the way, Coach Clinton Welch of the Purple Ridgepoint Panthers, when I first informed him I planned to do a broadcast of this game if there was no basketball game to broadcast on this particular day, the schedule that I was looking at said this game was going to start at 5.30. And he let me know that the game was going to start at 3, not 5.30. And at the time, I was kind of upset, and now I'm very glad. We're not going to get really hungry before dinner time tonight, I don't think. And I don't know how, you know, ESPN will sometimes put percent chances on things. Like in the middle of a, a football play, they'll freeze it and say the guy has a 37% chance of making the catch. I don't know how they do that. I don't believe in that garbage. But hold that thought. J.J. Kennett leading off. Got two strikeouts when he went to the mound in the first. And leading off the second, he takes one high. Braden Marone spells his last name M-A-R-R-O-N. Looks over the top of his glove. Brings it from the windup. And a big swing, but it's just a tapper foul over in front of the Ridgepoint dugout on the third base side. So I'm really glad that this game started at 3, not 5.30. I don't know what I would have done to cool my heels between a 10 a.m. game between Austin and Morton Ranch and a 5.30 game between Peyto and Ridgepoint. Pitch in low to Kennett, and the count is 2-1. and one. J.J. wears his purple socks high. Transfers his weight from the back foot to the front and back and forth. Now he's ready. Takes one upstairs. And it's three and one. Travis Vlasic waits to bat next. I want to thank Ms. Colette Michalis for taking care of the Game Changer page. It helps me have the information I want. And there is a strike at the letters taken by J.J. Kennett. And in keeping with the cross that he has on one cheek, he tells the umpire... I'm sorry, I meant no disrespect. I don't know if he used those exact words, but I'm sure that was the thought he conveyed. It is now three and two. Here comes the three, two pitch, and he swings and misses, and down goes JJ. He's a strikeout victim, swinging, although the when he was on the mound, Oviedo and Prieto went down and looking. Sorry, I don't know why I paused there. <laughs> I have so many things to think about. Travis Vlasic ready to pitch, ready to hit. Why did I say that? I haven't been taking my Prevagen long enough. First pitch swinging, in the air foul. Over here pursuing it is their first baseman, Silvis. But as you could hear, it hit aluminum. There are a couple of Fulshire softball girls who are watching this game and I guess they didn't bring their gloves. They were in good position to make the play. Vlasic ready. Here's the 0-1 from Marone. Inside with the breaking ball that looked like it was going to break, and you got to believe that Vlasic was kind of ready to wince if that 
hit him in the thigh. It would have left a mark. Not a big one. The 1-1 one -one pitch is up and in. He backs up. And it's 2-1. and one. There's a lot of construction going on beyond the property that is Fulcher High School. That one is up and in, and Vlasic takes another one. Three and one. Eight to nothing, Ridge Point. We're in the top of the second as they take on the Peyto Panthers. Underneath Sweet, and there goes... Uh, there goes Vlasic on down to first base, but he will not advance past that. So with one out, we've got a runner on and stepping up is Carter Groen. Now just someone's appearance is not necessarily the best indicator of, of power as far as how far you can hit a baseball, but no question, Carter Groen Looks like he can hit it farther than anyone else on this Ridge Point club. Takes the first pitch inside. <laughs> Taps the outside part of the plate, then the inside corner. Ready for Marone's pitch. The 1 0 on the way. He rips it into left field, a base hit. Scott picking it up out there and gets it quickly back in there. Runners at first and second as that single by Groen pushes Vlasic over to second. Now Theron Mihalis, left-handed hitter. Moving the dirt around in that box and he taps the plate about six different spots. Now he's got the bat poised. And Marone brings the first pitch to him. Check swing just a little bit high, one and nothing. I don't know that I was necessarily ready to broadcast a dramatic game either this morning when Austin took on Morton Ranch or today, but there's been absolutely zero grams of drama in either one of these games. There's a ground ball to second base. Could be two, they get the out at second, but that's it. The out made as, let's see, Gabriel Flores made the pick up and threw over to Jacob Scott, a correction, uh, Gabriel Velasquez. So they're now two outs, runners at the corners. Flasic is over there at second base. And kicking the dirt around is Forrest Jackson. Sweet, the catcher, steps out in front of the plate, has some signals for the infielders. But they can play at the normal depth here with two away. Pitch to Forrest Jackson, big rip and a miss. Marone took something off of that one. Join us on Monday evening, 6 p.m., Elkins hosting Nimitz. Another off-speed pitch, and he got a little piece of that one, but it is strike two. There's a particular piece of paper I'm looking for that's got information for you on it, but... Just don't know where it is. It's about the broadcast schedule for next week. Here goes the runner. Jackson takes one high. And going to second, Theron Mihalis just does not have to slide. No throw. So two runners in scoring position for Jackson. Here's the pitch. Big rip and a miss, and he was not able to do anything with those off-speed pitches. Marone gets out of it without allowing any runs. We'll go to the bottom of the second. The Ridge Point Panthers eight and the Peyto Panthers nothing. 
My Friday nights usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlists bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get gig speed internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X5 gateway. Actual speeds vary. All right. Just want to tell you something that I was not able to tell you accurately before. The third baseman for Ridgepoint is Landry Ham. So nothing has changed from the original defensive lineup except Landry Ham is now playing the hot corner. All right, Kay and Tillman, the right fielder, comes up for Peito. Ridgepoint with the gray caps with the purple bills and the purple RP on the front. First pitch by Kennett is a strike to Tillman. J.J. Roxanne brings it. Strike at the knees. Raise that eye level, lower it. Good strategy. See how he executes on the 0-2. Down and in, Tillman leaves it alone and it's one and two. Leans back a little bit in his batting stance, and there's a chopper over the mound and into center field. Justin Vosses in pursuit of it, but all he could do was wave at it as it went by. And Tillman, though he didn't look too good on strike one and strike two, that's why they give you three. Now Ashton Sweet. As the wind continues to blow out to left center, First pitch to him, down and away. Nice backhand there by Ferris. Rich Point has out hit Peito, eight to three. No errors by the Ridge Point Panthers. Peito has committed one. The next pitch is a strike at the knees, one and one. Kennett looks over at Tillman, throws over. And he was leaning the wrong way, but he did get back in. We do have a volunteer umpire in the stands who said he was out. And, you know, she might actually be right if you put it to video, but it doesn't matter what anybody in the stands thinks. Here's the pitch. And a rip toward third base. Scooped nicely by Ham. Throws to second for one. On to first. Not in time for the double play, but how about that Landry Ham? That play was honey-baked. One away. I wondered what that squeak was, but I realized I was leaning too hard on the fence. There's your problem right there, Vern. Okay, now it's Brandon Campos, the center fielder. Thought he was robbed of credit for a great catch in center field. Kennett throws over and Easily back in is, I guess, now the courtesy runner, Alvin Velasquez. Yeah, that's who that is. Pitch gets away from Ferris. That'll be a wild pitch on Kennett. And Alvin Velasquez moves over to the second. By the way, I don't know if Game Changer has talk to text. 
but his compost in the batter's box, and he takes a strike that looked like it was high. Call the strike, and uh, he's just going to shake his head. He needs a moment. Anyway, his last name is spelled C-A-M-P-O-S. Swings and fouls it out of play on the right side. They're done playing softball across the way. So nobody is going to get a foul ball off the top of their head over there in the stands watching softball. There aren't too many places in Fort Bend ISD where the softball and baseball fields are so close together as they are at Kempner. Swing and a miss. And down goes Brandon Campos. And well, there will be better at bats for him. Now it's Garrett Smith who started the game on the mound. With two outs, looks at the first pitch from Kennett. Down and in a little bit. Ridge Point and Travis finished with identical records atop District 26A last year as the second pitch is downstairs. 2-0. It was Travis who lasted the longest in the Class 6A baseball playoffs out of Fort Bend ISD, but they lost to a very surprising Jersey Village team that is very, very tough to deal with, and they have a lot of talented players coming back. And a pitch just misses low. And the count runs to 3 and nothing on Garrett Smith. Righty working to righty. The wind continuing to blow to left center. And it's outside for a four-pitch walk. Garrett Smith heads on down to first. And now Tyler Silvis, the first baseman, comes up. Silvis is a big fella. I think he was a football star. With two outs, the first pitch to him, he rips at it, and it's fouled off the shin guard of Owen Ferris and then trickles over towards the Ridgepoint dugout. Kennett brings the 0-1. And it's down the right field line, twisting, long run to make, and it falls in front of Forrest Jackson. That's going to bring home a run for Peto. They get one out of that as Alvin Velasquez, the courtesy runner, scores. It is now 8-1. to one. Clutch two-out hit for Peto. And the ninth man in the order, their first baseman, Tyler Silvis. So you can probably tell the Ridgepoint fans have been making more noise than those from Peto. Here's the pitch. Curve ball inside corner strike. It seems like every pitch, Kenneth's losing his hat. But he's having a great hair day, so it's okay. And how many people on a windy day like this can say they're having a great hair day? The wind up and the pitch. And it's a tapper toward third base. It'll be him. He's going to go across the diamond. Not in time. In fact, the throw gets past the first baseman, Vlasic. A run comes in, and it is eight to 8-2. Well, I guess on that play... Um, Ham could have run Silvis back to second base because he was already more than halfway to third. And they could have gotten the run down and finished it that way. He chose to fire across. And Coach Welch and Coach Dutka will talk to him about it. They are always calm, always teaching. It's one of the things I like about them the most. First pitch to Jacob Scott, the number two hitter in the lineup. Single and was caught stealing. In the first inning, swings and misses at the first pitch. It is eight to two, Ridge Point leads. That is a high pop up. 
Vasas calling. On the outfield, Grass reaches up and makes the grab. That'll do it. Peto inches closer. They're down 8-2. to two. This is VibeFortBend.com. We'll be right back. Look out. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Ridge Point leads 8-2 to two as we go to the third inning, and Marone out there for his second inning of work. And he works to Wilmot. First pitch is outside. Uh, actually, it was a called strike on the outside corner. It'll be Wilmot, Martin, and then back to the top of the order, Zion Stevens. Second pitch hits him in the back. Not very hard. It was a curveball, almost like getting hit by a Nerf ball. No big deal. By the way, we can close the book on Garrett Smith, the starter for Peyto. He had a rough outing in one inning, 58 pitches. 60% of them were strikes, but he gave up seven hits, eight runs. All of them earned and walked one. And he also gave up the homer to Justin Vosses, the inside the park job. Now Zion Stevens. Hits one high in the air. This should be playable. Backing up is their center fielder, Campos. He's got it. Calls off the left fielder, Jacob Scott. One away. Owen Ferris has shed the catcher's gear, and he's up there to do what he can to the baseball. It is driving me nuts. I keep looking for this thing that has, you know, the games that we plan to do. There it is. There it is. So I can tell you what we're doing next week. First pitch to Ferris is a strike that burns off the outside corner. So all of these, of course, are subject to change. But right now, our plan is Monday at 6, Nimitz at Elkins. Then on Tuesday, Angleton at Kempner. Then on Friday, Huntsville at Dulles. Here's the pitch. Ferris checks his swing, but it's called a strike. Then next Saturday, we'll have Angleton. Well, let's, let's do this in order, in chronological order. Elkins is going to Shadow Creek, and we plan to do that game at 10 o'clock. And then I will break all kinds of major traffic laws, getting to peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek for the game between Angleton and Austin. High fly ball. Ferris sends it to deep left, but it's going to hang up and fall short of the fence. And the catch is made by Scott. I shouldn't have said fall because that implies it went to the ground, and it didn't. It fell into Scott's mitt, and you have two outs. So Wilmot got on to start the inning via the hit by pitch. He is still at first base. Now Justin Vasas. He had that inside the park job 
and that pitch goes behind him. So he makes a little bit of a limbo move and smiles at the umpire and the catcher. One and nothing is the count. Open stance for Justin. Big rip at that one. Off speed and it's one and one. After the inside the park homer in the first, in the second he came up and flied out to center field. Gave it a good ride though. Marone brings it, and he rips it to left field. That is going to get down and one hop the wall. Wilmot coming to third, and Coach Welch gives him the stop sign there. It's a double for Vasas. So he's got the inside the park homer, and now a double. J.J. Kinnett comes up, and he can help himself out. In fact, uh, you know, who wouldn't want to win this game in run rule fashion? So two runners in scoring position with two away for Kennett, who's in line to be the winning pitcher. You know, one of the most interesting things about some of these games that we broadcast is the student section. Well, we have a very small student section for Ridge Point today as Kennett takes the first pitch strike at the letters. I can count all the Ridge Point students who are here today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just eight. Only eight. And they're all girls. Here's the 1-0. Kennett swings and misses at a changeup. And Sweet does a good job of keeping it in front of him because the ball ended up in the dirt. If he had not prevented that ball from staying in front of him, that's, that's poor wording. If he had allowed that ball to get through him, then Wilmot would have scored. Here's the 0-2. Kennett with a big swing, and it's just a tapper foul behind the home plate dirt. Coming out of the dugout to retrieve the ball is Devin McComas. You know, one of the things you got to do when you do this kind of thing, mention as many names as you can in a positive way. Kennett sends one to right center field. It will get down for a hit. Wilmot scores, and here comes Fosses with run number 10. And those girls I was talking about, they love it. It is now 10 to two, Ridge Point. So they got back the two runs that they gave up in the bottom of the second. You know, maybe we'll hear that a lot this year. I mean, the guys in the dugout, of course, the screaming fans, the adoring screaming fans in the stands, that's not bad either. Travis Vlasic. All right, so I think I gave you the entire broadcast schedule for the coming week. First pitch to Vlasic, squirts out of Sweet's mitt, and on to second goes Tyler Martin, the courtesy runner. By the way, um, if you're wondering why we're not doing any Ridge Point games next week, the only one that they have on their schedule, as far as I know, is a game at Clements on Saturday the 12th, but it's a non-district game. So that's, you know, pitch up and away. Count now two and nothing on Vlasic. Um, I believe that Ridge Point and Clemens are going to turn around and play each other in their first district game the following Tuesday. So we just didn't think it was worth it to do a Ridge Point Clements broadcast. Plus, we're doing the Elkins game and also that Austin game. There's a base hit to left field. Tyler Martin chugging around third, comes home to score. It is now 11 to 2. Another two out hit coming through is Travis Vlasic. You know, you'd think with the rivalry between Ridge Point and Travis that Travis Vlasic would be given a nickname of some kind. So they don't have to say Travis. I guess they could call him TV. That would be cool. Carter Groen stands in. 11 2 Ridge Point. First pitch swinging, it's up in the air. It is long, it is high and far, and it is 
gone. I knew somebody was going to hit it up into the wind, and the wind would just carry it out. And it is 13 to 2. Mayday, Mayday, Peyto is going down. And I'm looking at uh, Carter's dad, Clary. Maybe he can tell me how many homers. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's going to get old or not. But I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to text Clary Groen and uh, find out if, uh, well, how many homers his boy has. So Ridge Point has now scored five in the inning. Eight in the first, none of the second. Thank you so much, Clary. That is the second homer of the year for the younger and much larger Carter Gruen. <laughs> oh and two the count. Up and away is the pitch to Theron Mihalis. Rocking and firing is Marone. Swing and a foul back behind us. Look out. It hits concrete and more concrete. And it used to be whenever a foul ball went, went outside the confines of the ballpark, someone would go after it. And today, people just don't care. Just off the outside corner. The Ridge Point student section is down from eight fans to two. Are they leaving? Okay, good. Swing and a fly ball to short left field. Going out is the shortstop, Velasquez. Catch is made. Actually, it's made by the left fielder. Coming on strong, Jacob Scott made the play, and that ends the inning, but not before. The Panthers, the Purple Panthers, that is, score five times, including the two-run bomb by Carter Groen. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. My Friday nights usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlists bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get GigSpeed Internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. The very small Ridge Point student section is back at full strength now. And here we go, leading off for Peto in the bottom of the third. They send up Daniel Oviedo, their number three hitter, to be followed by Josh Prieto and Kayan Tillman. Oviedo struck out looking his first time. Righty versus righty as J.J. Kennett works. Curve ball fouled off the screen on the right side. And they have some stuff to kind of obscure the fence that kind of looks like ivy. You know, it's not ivy, but it has a good look to it. Here at Fulcher, where we probably won't be doing too many games this year. Can it overthrew it a little bit? His hat flies off again. One and two. He needs a smaller hat or one with more elasticity. Here's the pitch, and that is ripped down the left field line. It is in there for a hit and rolling to the corner. Yeah, that's trouble. It's going to be a double, double trouble as Scott runs it down. Correction. Sorry about that. Not Scott. 
Ms. Mihalis needs to update her her game changer page. That's Carter growing out there in left field. Sorry, I'm leaning on the game changer page today. Prieto batting takes the first pitch for a ball. Trying to remember, I think Prieto wore number 43 on the football field, and like I said, he killed Hightower in their two games. Pitch on the way, and that is high in the air to short right. Jackson moving in, but it is going to be the second baseman. Stevens backing up and making the play. Two outs. And staying at second base is Oviedo. Oviedo, actually. And that is Kayan Tillman, who single to center field, leading off the second. And he takes a look at the first pitch, down and away for a ball. Pretty much a straight up posture in the batter's box. Kenneth looks back at second, brings the ball home. Big rip and a miss. Couldn't catch up to the heater. And it's one and one. Pitch on the way. Tillman takes down and in, and it's two and one. 13 to two is our score, and when you have a game as lopsided as this, then, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to maybe entertain, say the unexpected, as Tillman tries to stop his swing but can't, and now he's down. It's, it's now two and two. But there is something uh, in all seriousness in all seriousness that I want to say after Tillman is done with his plate appearance. Kenneth brings it. Oh, I don't know how that missed, but it was evidently off the outside corner. Three and two. Wind's still blowing out to left field, and it helped Carter Groen hit a home run that has made it 13 to two. And Kennett turns around, looks back at second, does not make a throw. I need to give uh, a name to that particular maneuver. Now, if they look at third, then go back to first but don't throw, that's what I call the Shakespeare move. As Tillman sends a high fly ball to center field, ranging back is Mihalis. Oh, that is hit deep, and it is gone. It's a two-run bomb, and the game is a little bit closer. 13-4 to four now. Tillman looks strong, and uh, yeah, he is strong. So, <laughs> did you hear that? One of the Ridgepoint fans said, eh, scoreboard. But Tillman, oh, and they have a little toy basketball goal and a very small basketball, and Tillman slam dunked one. By the way, Peto had a great basketball season. Uh, they didn't lose until last night in the regional semifinals to <sighs> P.J. Haggerty and Crosby. I sigh when I say P.J. Haggerty, and this is not the serious thing yet. We still have one out in the bases empty after that two-run shot, and Ashton Sweet is batting for Peto. So um, P.J. Haggerty, as a freshman, played for Ridge Point's basketball team. How much different would the Panthers... Ridgepoint Panthers season have been if PJ had stayed uh, on the hard scrabble streets of Siena. I don't know, but I have a feeling it would have been well a little bit stronger. I mean, PJ's a great talent, but he moved on to Crosby for his sophomore year and has since stayed there, but his Crosby Cougars defeated Peto in the Class 5A Region 3 Boys Basketball Semifinals. 72 to 68. Would Peto be the regional finalist if P.J. Haggerty hadn't been on the other side? Don't know. What I do know is this. Sweet just draw to, uh, drew a walk. And we still have just one out in the bottom of the third. 
And uh, let me check the score here. It is 13 to 4. The scoreboard has gone nuts. I will look at the game changer page and not the scoreboard as Brandon Campo steps into the box. Kennett brings him to the first pitch. And the thing that I was going to say that is, is on a serious note. Uh, when we lost our good friend Easy De Los Santos, the longtime head baseball coach at Clements, and who during the past year or so had moved over to George Ranch as an assistant football coach and an assistant baseball coach, and he passed in December. It was a very sad day, but it was very gratifying to see the family, the, the feeling of family, the, the great gathering of people who had coached with, played for, competed against Easy De Los Santos. He was just such a charismatic guy, and um, I learned a lot about him that I didn't know. I thought I, I knew a lot about him, but but during that service at River Point Church, it was just um, it was good for us all to be there and help everybody get through the difficulty of losing our good friend Easy De Los Santos. So. All the best to his surviving family members, especially the ones that I know best are his his three his first three kids. So I remember seeing Coach Welch and Coach Dutka there, and it was just uh, like I said, it was good for us to be there. Campo struck out; he's having a rough day, and now it's Garrett Smith. He had a rough day in the top of the first when he was pitching. Swings and misses. He's now down 0-2. And after he swings and misses, he takes kind of a, I don't know, about a 12-foot in diameter circular walk around everybody before he gets back in the box. Still just one out. Here's the pitch to him. You know, I think the scoreboard should say two outs because Campo struck out. That was the second out. And I think we might need a recount on the Ridgepoint student section. I think we have nine students here because uh, Carver Groen's little sister is sitting with her dad. But she might be in junior high. I don't know. Here goes the runner. Pitch outside for a ball. Throw down and in time to nail the, the would-be base stealer. Not sweet, but the guy who's running for him. That's Alvin Velasquez. And that's how the third inning ends. But we do get a two-run homer from Tillman of Peto, and that draws it a little bit closer. It is Ridgepoint 13 and Peto 4. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at the Office Depot Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. And as a teacher, I know that the last week before spring break, you're just looking for that motivation. It's kind of hard to find it sometimes. But uh, I will not lose my motivation to bring you games on VibeFortBend.com. We're going to bring you five. And just because I need something to say, on Monday night at 6, Nimitz at Elkins. 
Angleton at Kempner on Tuesday, March the 8th. Then on Friday, March the 11th, it is Huntsville at Dulles in a game that starts at 7. I'm sorry, 6. Huntsville at Dulles starts at 6. Hopefully the Bunny Rabbit will make an appearance. And then two games on Saturday, a week from today, Elkins at Shadow Creek at 10. And then Angleton at Austin. First pitch swing, and it's a dink single for Jackson. Forrest lifts one into right field right in front of Tillman. And now it's time for Josh Wilmot. Maybe he'll make a bid for a long ball. First pitch to Wilmot is high. And he's a tall kid, so that pitch was really high. Some other features of our schedule that you might want to know about. 1-0 to Wilmot. Rip and a foul tip into the mitt of Josh Sweet. So the first District 26A game, the first one that counts, will be at Clements for the game between these Ridgepoint Panthers and the Rangers. Pitch coming and a curveball strike. And by the way, we have a new pitcher and I missed it. Sorry about that. It is Tyler Silvis who's moved over from first base. He and Marone, I believe, have changed places. There's a throw over. They almost got Forrest Jackson leaning, but he does dive back in. And you know what? Over at first base, it is actually, yeah, it is Marone. Sorry about that. So during the week of spring break, we do have that Ridgepoint at Clements game, 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. Swing and a miss by Wilmot. Down he goes. One away, and we go to the top of the order, Zion Stevens. Also during the week of spring break, we have a Thursday game at 12 noon on Thursday that's actually a softball game. Bay City at Kempner. Softball, Thursday, March the 17th at high noon. And then another Ridgepoint baseball game on Friday, March the 18th as the Austin Bulldogs visit the hard scrabble streets of Siena. And there is Stevens with a first pitch swinging ground ball past third base and into the corner. Here comes Forrest Jackson, and he puts on the brakes at third. Runners at second and third, and a double for Zion Stevens, who is flexing his muscles out there on second base. Those of you who are fans of Ridgepoint softball, we will have a Ridgepoint softball game on Tuesday, March the 29th. And we'll also have their game against Austin on Tuesday, April the 5th. And when they play Travis on Friday, April the 22nd, that might be to decide the District 26A title. And we'll have that one. Curveball in there for a strike to Owen Ferris. We've had a lot of sunshine today, but now the sun has disappeared behind a big puffy cloud. And that's fine. Ferris steps out, back in, kind of like on a subway platform. Wears the pants above his kneecaps, looks at a curveball, and it's high. One and one. One out here in the top of the fourth. It is 13 to 13-4, the Ridgepoint Panthers over the Peyto Panthers. For all I know, Peyto has a very good baseball team. They're just not having a very good day. Pitch to Ferris, and he rips it towards shortstop. Velasquez makes the catch, tries to double up the runner, Stevens, at second. That throw is not in time, but there are two away now. And Justin Vosses, you know, if we kept playing a little bit longer, he might hit for the cycle. He's got a double and a homer. Although, if you remember the Seinfeld episode with Paul O'Neill and Kramer promising that Paul O'Neill would hit two home runs, and the kid... Refused to say that Kramer had come through on his promise because one of the home runs was an inside-the-park job. They argued about that. 
Well, anyway. Vasas with the low, slow practice swings. He's got the white batting gloves. Pitch from Silvis is down and away, and Justin hops out of the batter's box. Thankful that he got the call, 2-0. Yeah, there's a lot of work being done here outside the outfield fence near Fulcher High School. A lot of things being built. Here's the pitch. Up and in to Justin, it's 3-0. I wonder if Coach Welch will give him the green light. Probably not. I'm going to say no. You're up nine. It's a tournament game. He'll be taking. And he couldn't have swung at that uh, with a tennis racket. It was above his head for ball four. All right, so we got the bases loaded with Purple Panthers. And here is J.J. Kennett. He could put a cherry on top of what will be a pitching victory for him by getting an extra base hit right here as his team already leads 13-4. to four. Pitch on the way. It's high. Sweet flags it down. Silvis, who had spent his day at first base, on the mound now and pitching from the stretch with the bases loaded. The 1-0 to J.J. He rips. Looked like he was trying to hit that one all the way to Sealy, But he came up empty. This will be the last game of the day here. A lot of great places you can go out to eat if you're on your way home, going from Fulcher back to Siena. Pitch on the way. Missed the outside corner with a breaking ball. It's two and one. Can it looking around at all those base runners, kind of like a quarterback looks at the defense before Calling for the snap. Here's the 2-1 down and in. It's 3-1, and one, and Silvis has to groove one here. He does not want to walk in the 14th run. By the way, that would put Ridgepoint up by 10. But we don't get to go home unless we've completed five innings with an advantage of 10 runs. Can it takes down and away, and a run comes in to make it 14-4. Forrest Jackson steps on the plate. Now Travis Vlasic. I'm going to turn up the crowd mic next time they do that. That's fun. All right, Tyler Martin comes on. He's going to run for Kennett. By the way, Daniel Oviedo is playing shortstop now. He had been playing third base. So Gabriel Velasquez, I guess, is done. There's a ground ball toward short. Oviedo picks it up on two hops, throws across. Nice dig out at the other end by Baron, or Marone, rather. And that ends the inning, or the top of the fourth, rather. It's 14-4. to four. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint is cruising over Peto. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. 
Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Those cheers you hear are for um, center fielder for Ridgepoint. Mihalis made the catch on a first pitch swinging long fly ball. Silvis now batting for Peto, and the guy who hit that first one was Garrett Smith, who when this game started was the pitching starting pitching counterpart of J.J. Kennett. He lasted one inning. There's another fly ball to center field, but it's Mihalis ranging back and making the catch. So three pitches, two outs. J.J. Kennett, for the most part, just pitching from a rocking chair today, although he has given up seven hits. Gabriel Velasquez back to the top of the order. He's no longer playing shortstop, but he's still batting in the leadoff spot. And if he can get on, Jacob Scott will be next. Pitch is high, 2-0. and oh. By the way, I called the Peto catcher a few moments ago. I called him Joshua Sweet. It's actually Ashton Sweet, and I don't know. There must be someone in the sports world Named Joshua Sweet. I'm not sure I would say that, why I would say that. But I'm sure there's a reason. And the sun has reemerged from behind the clouds. Check swing, and it goes off the front of the Peyto dugout. Coach Chris Carejo picking it up. Actually, Chris Carejo is in the third base box. There is action in the Ridgepoint bullpen. Pitch bounces in for a ball. Three and nothing on Gabriel Velasquez. And I'll try to get a good look, see who's warming up for Ridgepoint, but it is a right-hander. That I can tell you. Okay, I think I'm going to be able to stand up. Maybe I can see that number. Yes, I can. Trace Huffman is getting loose in the Ridgepoint bullpen. And now Jacob Scott, single in the first, but by the time he came up to bat, this game was completely out of hand, and Ridgepoint leads it right now, 14 to four. Swing and a miss at a pitch down and in. So that's the only hit that Scott has had today. He's one for two. And now a pitch that gets past Owen Ferris. And that's going to be a wild pitch. And the reason I say that is not because I saw it, because I actually looked away to look at my game changer page, I confess. But J.J. Kennett tapped himself on the chest as if to say, my bad. So that's why I'll say it's a wild pitch. Although... It could have just been a cross-up where he threw the wrong kind of pitch. High fly ball in the air, going to go foul and out of play on the left side. There's beautiful blue sky up there between the clouds. Can it pitch it from the windup, and it's a fly ball to center. Mihalis right there, and the runner was moving. On a one-two pitch because I think uh, Kennett kind of, I think it might have gone from the windup, and that's why the guy left, but that, that pitch was hit to center field. It was the third out, and so it was of no consequence. We have played four innings. It is 14-4, Ridgepoint over Peyto, and Ridgepoint, if they can maintain 
their 10 run lead or expand on it before we complete this upcoming fifth inning, then we'll be able to go home early. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. My Friday nights usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlists bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get GigSpeed Internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. We're back here, at, back here at Fulcher High School where the Ridgepoint Panthers are giving the Katie Pato Panthers a pretty good beatdown. But it is tournament play. Now, if you're wondering, you're listening here today and you're thinking there's something missing. Well, there are a few things missing. And number one is huge crowds. This is tournament <laughs> baseball and you don't get the huge numbers of fans. And there's also kind of a lack of intensity because it's not a district game. It doesn't really count. They're just kind of tuning up to get ready for district play as the first pitch is swung on and fouled way down the left field line by Carter Groen, who already has a two-run homer in this game. Anyway, what's missing is there's nobody in the press box playing music between innings. You just don't have that uh, party atmosphere. No announcer giving people's names so you can cheer when your guy comes up. Pitch in the dirt, bounces off of Sweet, and it's one and one on Carter Groen. It is Silvis out there for his second full inning of work. Big rip and a tapper foul that goes behind home plate. We've got to see some long balls today. And an inside the park homer by Justin Vossis. I'll bet Carter Groen would like to hit another bomb. Fouls it back and to the right. So we don't have anybody in the press box announcing anything or playing any music, but we do have the concession stand. How's that concession stand? It's prepackaged food. I'm sure it's fine. Check the date, though. One and two the count on Carter Groen. Come on, Carter. Hit another bomb. Here it comes. Swing and a miss at the nasty hook. Silvis threw his best curveball, and uh, he wins that battle. All right, who's coming up now? It is Connor Aga. Am I saying that name right? Aga? Aga. Aga. Very good. He swings lefty facing the right-handed pitcher, Silvis. Silvis out there smiling about something. And Aga smiling about something as he steps into the box. He's got some of that Joe Montana curly hair coming out of the back of his batting helmet. Swings at the first pitch and off the end of the bat. Down the left field line, over the bullpen. And into no man's land. What if he went oppo and hit one out? That would be something. Come on, Connor Aga. You can do it. Here's the pitch. Just, oh, I was about to say just missed the outside corner. But in the umpire's judgment, it caught the outside corner. Rich points, uh, they're good at making funny noises in that dugout. And that's going back a few seasons. 
pitch high. And overly, ridiculously enthusiastic cheers for a pitch that is high for a ball in a 14-4 game. With one out. Aga takes one down in the dirt. Nice block by Sweet. And Silvis continues to be amused about something out there on the mound. He's just, uh, something is putting a smile on his face. Maybe it's what they're saying in the dugout. Pitch on the way. Check swing, and it's high for a ball. I really wish that the microphone cord was longer and we could put it closer to the dugout. That would be fun. You would hear so many things. Here's the 2-2. High for a ball. I say the 2-2, but the scoreboard was obviously wrong because the pitch was high and Aga goes to first base with a walk. And now Tyler Martin, who's been busy running bases for other players, will get up there and hit for himself. So with Aga at first, we'll see what Tyler Martin can do with the bat. Pitch on the way, swings at one down and in. And it's nothing in one. By the way, I think a game such as this, curveball in there for strike two, nothing in two on Martin. A game such as this deserves a very quick goodbye. We're not going to do some post-game show, although we did one with the Austin boys. They won their game 11-1 to over Morton Ranch. But we're just going to say a quick goodbye. Pitch looked pretty good, but evidently it was low. It's 1-2. and two. By the way, I'm thinking about my buddy Mitchell Padgett back there at World Vipe Headquarters. Or should I say Vipe World Headquarters? He's about ready for this game to be over, I'm sure. Here's the pitch. Sprayed foul, and Coach Dutka does not make a diving one-handed bare hand attempt at catching it. Little soft liner toward the first base coaching box. That wind's still blowing hard out to left center. It's there for Tyler Martin. If he wants to make a great memory right now, here we go. But he sends it to right field. Will it drop? No, it is caught. Tillman came in and got it, shading his eyes from the bright sunshine. Right fielder and second baseman probably getting the worst of the late afternoon sun. Now Quinn Pfeiffer will bat. So he comes in and he is basically replacing Josh Wilmot, 24 for 23. And uh, Quinn has been asked to take off a piece of jewelry around his neck. He's having trouble with the clasp. And I guess he asked uh, Travis Vlasic, he almost had to ask him to help him with it. All right, now he, he had to take the batting gloves off to unclasp the necklace thing. Now he puts the gloves back on, and the mighty Quinn steps into the batter's box. Silvis comes set with two outs and a runner at first, up and in. Ball one on Quinn Pfeiffer. No relation, as far as I know, to Michelle Pfeiffer. Spells his name the same way, though. Pitch on the way. In the dirt. Blocked nicely by Sweet. And staying at first base is Connor Aga. You know, uh, there used to be a Major League Baseball player named Andres Galarraga. Here's the pitch. 
And it hits Pfeiffer in the left forearm. But he's a ball player. He's tough. He doesn't even wince. He goes down to first base. Aga to second. So if I ever had the chance, I would love to introduce Andres Galarraga and Conor Aga. That would be fun. What if Connor had a sister who married Andres' son? Then she'd be, let's say her name was Julie. She'd be Julie Aga Galarraga. Back to the game. And another hit by pitch. And it's Blaine Ryan. He gets his chance. Blaine Ryan gets on the field and he gets plunked in the left shoulder blade. Silvis is still smiling. <laughs> you know, before he was smiling about something, but it wasn't hit by pitches. We know. What are you going to do? It's 14 to 4. So when we have the bottom of the fifth inning, and Ridgepoint will try to protect a lead of at least 10 runs and try to end this thing early on the mercy rule. Not sure if J.J. Kennett's going to be the pitcher or not. We've had two guys warming up in the bullpen. Nobody's warming now. Owen Ferris swings at the first pitch from Silvis and taps one foul back to the screen. Well, J.J. Kennett has catcher's gear on, so he ain't going to be pitching. That answers that. Justin Vosses on deck. With two outs and an 0-1 count on Ferris. Breaking ball high. You know, Silvis is smiling so much, I get the feeling that he doesn't pitch a lot. Maybe he's just been called in as a position player to pitch. And it's always fun in a major league game when a team is getting beaten badly and they bring in the position player to pitch. Next one is outside for a ball, 2-1. Well... You know, he's, he's got some movement on his breaking pitches. I will say that. Ferris taps the outside of the plate and the inside corner. Righty to righty, here it comes. Rip down the left field line and it is a foul ball. You know, here at Fulcher, there are blind corners for pretty much all the fans and the announcer, myself. There's a whole lot of territory near the foul poles on either side that you can't see from the stands. Ferris watches one in the dirt. Sweet keeps it in front. And I didn't mention that the bases are full of purple panthers, but they are. Aga at third, Pfeiffer at second, and Blaine Ryan at first. And Owen Ferris with a 3-2 count. The runners will be moving. Silvis brings it. Foul ball, and they'll have to go back to their spots, and we'll do it all over again. By the way, last year, our, our long school year of broadcasted events, I think we did 125 different broadcasted events athletic contests and the last of them was the Ridgepoint girls losing to Deer Park in the softball playoffs down the left field line but it twists foul off the fence over there and Ferris making very good contact but what do you tell a guy to do even going back to Little League straighten it out easier said than done of course I guess, especially against the multi-talented Silvis. All right, runners will be on the move again. There they go. And a ground ball past third, but it is foul. And lucky for the Peyto Panthers. Garrett Smith is now playing third base. Have to wait a moment to get the ball back in. And now we got to get the left fielder back into position. That's Scott.
Now we're ready for yet another three and two. There go the runners. Pitch is high. Ball four. Another run comes in. 15 to four. Justin Vosses comes up for the Panthers. Inside the park, Homer. And a double. And he has induced a lot of those joyful chants coming out of the Ridge Point dugout today. Silva's ready, brings the first pitch. Vosses was trying to go downtown, but he fouls it back. And good hustle on the part of Travis Vlasic, who comes out of the dugout, picks up the foul ball, tosses it to the umpire, who makes an error. Vosses hands him the ball. And we resume the action. Here it comes. And that is a base hit to center field. Two runs coming in. It makes it, hmm, I've almost lost track. It makes it 17 to four. Justin Vosses is having himself a good week today. Hey, 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 indeed. Thank you, Mitchell Paget. You have great patience. He's my producer back there at Vipe World Headquarters. I'll bet that I am the last game of the day that he's keeping track of. Vipe does games in markets all over the great state of Texas. And they do some stuff in Louisiana, Oklahoma, Alabama. All right, after that base hit by Vosses, drives home two more runs to make it 17-4. Here is J.J. Kennett, who had to take off the catcher's beer, uh, gear. First pitch swinging, backhand by the second baseman, and the play made forced out at second base. And mercifully, the top of the fifth comes to an end. 17-4 is our score as uh, Alvin Velasquez made that last play and flipped to Obieto. And so Ridge Point is up by 13. If they can avoid giving up more than three runs, then we will go home early. VibeFortBend.com. There's one other thing I've got to tell you about after the break. We'll be back. My Friday nights usually spent out. But since my friends got Xfinity Internet, Friday nights in are where it's at. Because Xfinity has Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power a house full of connected devices all at once. We got our show streaming, playlists bumping, and games galore. That's gig speed Wi-Fi for every great night in. Can your internet do that? Come on, y'all. The coasters aren't just for decoration. Now through March 7th, ask how to get a special offer of $200 back when you get gig speed internet. Or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New Connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. All right, Ridge Point is going to try and end this thing early. Basically, it's the high school baseball version of the technical knockout as they lead 17-4, to and they have a new pitcher on the mound. He is Will Doracek. He had an older brother that was going to be a senior on the team that would have played in 2020. And I believe that in the sports fans heaven, you can answer every what if when it comes to sports. I really would love to know what would have happened if they hadn't had to, well, if they hadn't decided to shut everything down in 2020. What if Ridgepoint had been able to play that 2020 season? I think it would have been awesome. I don't know how far they would have gone if they would have brought home the big prize from Round Rock. But, um, you know, if you go to heaven and you're a big sports fan, you're going to get a nice media room and you can answer every question. You can figure out would the Hightower Hurricanes have won state in boys basketball in 2020 had they gotten to stay in San Antonio and play Lancaster in the state semifinal. What if Jackie Smith hadn't dropped that pass in Super Bowl XIII? Would the Cowboys have beaten the Steelers? You don't know, but it would be great to find out. 
So it is the left-hander Doracek. Nods at Kennett, who is now playing catcher. The lefty brings it. Big swing and a foul back into the net as he pitches to Daniel Oviedo Barella. Here comes the 0-1. Tried to burn off the outside corner, but it was away. Oviedo's been playing the last two innings at shortstop. Doracek rocks and fires. Swinging a little number toward first base. It's going to be a tough play. Doracek covering and gets there in time. Good job. That's why you do those drills. It was so slowly hit. And the first baseman, Vlasic, had to charge in and scooped it over there to Doracek. So that speaks well of Will. He's on the bench. No in-game duties whatsoever. Other than maybe, I don't know, keeping a book or something. But he was ready and did exactly what he needed to do. Now it is Silvis in the batter's box. Correction, it's not Silvis. Instead, it is Josh Prieto. And the first pitch is a foul ball that taps over by the on-deck circle on first base side where Tillman is waiting to hit. He's had one of the offensive highlights for Peto with his two-run bomb. Pitch down and in by Doracek, and the count is one and one. I think the scoreboard operator has even lost interest. Here's the pitch. Just a little bit low, and it's two and one. Doracek doesn't want to mess around. He's got the big lead. Let's just get this thing done. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. Shakes off one sign. Shakes off two. Now he nods and... The windup begins. Pitch on the way in the dirt. It's now three and two. Yep. Scoreboard says three and one, but the umpire says three and two. Come on, don't lose him, Will. Here we go. Just missed the inside corner. Looked pretty good, but it's a it's a full count walk. And here is Mr. Tillman. Kayan had the two-run homer. Right foot in the very back of the batter's box. Doracek brings it. Down and in. Nice block by Kennett. The wind has never stopped, so that is still in play. Ridgepoint needs to make sure they don't give up more than three runs in this inning before retiring the side. And there's another pitch that looked pretty good. Looked like it caught the inside corner, but no. That's ball two. The left-hander door check comes set, comes home. Burns off the outside corner. It looks like... The inside corner isn't being given so much, but the outside corner is. And time taken by somebody, maybe it was Tillman. Doracek brings it. Pitch is high. That's ball three. Plenty of leeway for Doracek to work on his control right here. It's okay to challenge. 3-1 pitch and sprayed foul on the right side. Almost hit the roof of the concession stand, which I'm guessing is closed by now. One out in the bottom of the fifth and Ridgepoint leading 17-4, trying to close out. A run rule win. Swing and a miss by Tillman. And Doracek gets the strikeout. 
And the Purple Panthers from Siena are one out away. And here is Ashton Sweet. Doracek comes set, comes home with it. First pitch swinging, foul ground on the right side, ranging back, and the catch made, and the game is over. Travis Vlasic flags it down, and mercifully, this game is over. We can all go home. So let's uh, take a look at the Game Changer page, dutifully and capably manned, or womaned, I guess I should say, by Colette Mihalis. The Ridgepoint Panthers with 17 runs on 15 hits. They made no errors. They get the win over Peto, which had four runs on seven hits. And one error was charged to the Panthers by Ms. Mihalis. So you had home runs by Tillman for Peto and also Carter Groen and Justin Vosses for the Ridgepoint Panthers. And let's see, who was the, who was the top RBI man for the Panthers? Well, it was Vosses with five runs driven in. Kennett drove in three himself. So just a very active day for the Ridgepoint offense. Mihalis had a double, so did Zion Stevens. Vosses added a double to his production. The winning pitcher, J.J. Kennett, goes four innings, 62% strikes, gives up seven hits, four runs. All of them earned, struck out four, walked three, and gave up one home run. And it was Garrett Smith who takes the loss for Peto. He threw the one inning, gave up seven hits and eight runs, all of them earned. So for everybody on the Vibe team, we thank you so much for listening. Ridge Point looking good, and I am very anxious to see what they do in district play starts. We know the usual suspects. We know Travis is always going to be very strong. We know that Elkins is going to be competitive. And so happy trails to everyone who is going home from this game and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Roger Smith and the entire VibeFortBend.com team saying so long from Fulcher. Our final score one more time. Ridgepoint 17 and the Peto Panthers 4. Goodbye, everybody.